Is the national media actually wising up to the fact that BYU is, you know, good after an 8-0 start? Well, according to some, they are changing their tone, but does it really matter for BYU football? You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first view and or listen of the day. And a big thank you to all of you, once again, our everydayers with us right here on your original daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com today. Place your first $5 bet, and if it wins, you get $150 in bonus bets, uh, courtesy of our friends over at FanDuel. Go to FanDuel.com to get started today. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. And as I mentioned in the open, is the national media finally, you know, wising up to the fact that the BYU football program is a force to be reckoned with? Well, I think some of them are. Now, there have been some out there who have been riding with BYU since the get-go. I'm not going to lump the entire, quote-unquote, national media uh, into one major group, but there have been some who have been notorious for holding out on BYU. Now, there will always be the John Wilners of the world, and I love me some John, but he is quite honestly a guy that just wants to poo-poo everything BYU it feels like at any given opportunity and his uh, polling in the AP top 25 poll is indications of such some of his writing in the past that type of stuff and I also think there's part of it to him that he understands that if he trolls BYU fans guess what clicks and interaction are bound to follow and that goes for a lot of the national media trust me we have podcasts on this network that you guys are well aware of who any chance they get they're talking all things BYU because guess what Cougar fans, to your everlasting credit, y'all consume everything BYU. That's props to you guys. Comes from literally worldwide, and I cannot thank you guys enough because guess what? It benefits me on this here podcast. But three guys that I respect immensely because they work in the podcast sphere but have bigger reach than I do and obviously talk about college football at a national level, whereas I talk about it at a team level covering BYU here on Locked on Cougars are uh, Dan uh, Rubenstein and also Ty Hildebrandt from the Solid Verbal Podcast. I have been a devotee of that podcast since the late 20 aughts, like 2008, 2009 is when I started listening to those guys. Uh, they have been guys I have uh, listened to for years. And also, a recent, more recent one for me, is Josh Pate. Uh, Pate stayed obviously part of the 24-7 Sports Network doing a podcast there. In the last couple of days, they have taken to their own podcast and have essentially issued a mea culpa of sorts about the BYU football program. Now, they're not coming out and saying, oh, BYU is just awesome. They're not slobbering all over the Cougars, and I don't expect them to. I'll be very blunt about that. But what I am looking at here is, to use uh, Josh Pate, for example, he, his quote here, so the model, what he uses for his advanced analytics, has doubted Brigham Young at every turn this year. We have bet against them. I have kept him outside the top 25 of the JP poll. He does his own top 25. And I realize it's time to make a change. I have doubted BYU all year. I have not called them fraudulent or anything like that. I supremely respect what they have been doing, but I looked at it and said, quote, is this sustainable, unquote? Is this the way they're winning games really going to sustain? Well, it is sustaining. The last two wins have been impressive to me. So, as he mentions, uh, that he has been doubting BYU. I listened to Dan and Ty, their recap of the college football weekend, and they essentially said similar things. And they used the analogy of TCU just a couple of years ago. Remember that TCU team that made that miracle run uh, to the national championship, pulling wins out of every corner it felt like that they could possibly pull them out of, last-minute uh, field goals for the win and the like, and make that immaculate run to the national championship. And I remember vividly Dan and Ty every week on that podcast saying, when is this TCU dream going to die? And it literally never died until the night of the national championship. And they use that essentially as a, a, a comparison for what BYU is doing right now. What BYU football is accomplishing goes beyond advanced analytics, goes beyond what numbers can tell you about a, quote, good team out there when it comes to college football. The Cougars are defying a lot of expectations, and I'm telling you, it defies my expectations as well amidst an 8 no start. But it is undoubtedly true that this is a BYU football team that knows how to win. Dan summed it up in an extremely uh, complimentary way, I felt like, when he said that winning is a skill. It is absolutely a skill. Teams that know how to win know how to just simply find a way. 
And that's a phrase that is used often across all spectrums of life. But BYU football has proven that this year. They have found themselves in a myriad of different circumstances and essentially have found a way to go to 8-0. No. Now, they are two through two-thirds, excuse me, of the way through their uh season so far, the regular season, with a chance, should they go, let's say three and one, potentially four and oh down the stretch, they're gonna very well find themselves playing in Arlington, Texas in the first weekend of December for a conference title game against Colorado, Kansas State, Iowa State, one of those uh, three, it feels like, will be their opposite BYU. They have to handle their business. There's no doubt about that. And should they come out and fall flat on their face a week from Saturday at Utah, guess what? Josh Pate, Dan Rubenstein, Ty Hildebrandt, you have my permission, if not as if you needed it, to jump all over the proverbial grave of BYU and say, see, told you so. When I just, when I bought in, they fall flat on their face because that is still a possibility for the BYU football program. But I can appreciate the fact that these guys understand that what BYU is doing right now just kind of defies all logic and expectation and reason and every other superlative you want to insert into that uh, sentence there. This is a BYU team that is having a magical run. And we all know that college football, it is a sport that, unlike many others, that that magic, however you don't want to define it, it can carry you an extremely, extremely long way. And it can power you as BYU well knows 40 years ago to a national title. There are members of the 1980s era BYU Cougars who will tell you the 1984 team might be one of the quote unquote weaker teams of that decade for BYU. They had little to no expectations going into that year. They were coming off a fabulous two, uh, 1983 season that had been following 80, 81, 82. And it's incredible to consider what 84 accomplished, but they had some magic, obviously. They overcame injuries. They overcame uh, incredible odds. Remember the, the dive at Hawaii to drag down Raphael Cherry by Kyle Morrell. You have to have iconic plays like that. And BYU's already had some of those this season. Think of the pass from Jake Retzloff to Darius Lasser to cap off an incredible comeback win over Oklahoma State. The no, 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 yes moment with the punt return for Parker Kingston against Kansas State. There are iconic moments all over this BYU season right now, and it's been a magical year. The magical ride is going to continue. Now, we have two weeks to lead up till BYU takes on the University of Utah in the rivalry game. And I, for one, am excited for it. It's a game that I've always enjoyed. I've been able to kind of separate the, the vitriol and the crap, as it were, and be able to just enjoy it for what it is. A high-level football game that Dan and Ty also talked about this on the Solid Verbal, saying that it's one of those games that you forever you throw out the records when those two teams get together. We saw evidence of that in the battle for the Sunflower State this past week. Kansas has been down hard all season long, seemingly unable to get over the hump, and nearly, very nearly gave BYU a major break by upsetting Kansas State. Well, K-State came through in the end and won that game by the skin of their teeth, and that's a credit to Kansas State because they keep their pursuit of BYU in a Big 12 title game berth on, uh, on track. But... I look at this and I can understand why guys like Josh Pate and the solid verbal guys, I'm sure there's others out there who are saying, yeah, okay, I, I, I get it now. It's not easy to define what makes BYU elite in any logical sense right now. But the one thing that I can take away having a keen eye on this team literally every day is that this BYU team, they believe in themselves. They don't need anybody else outside of them talking about them. In fact, I would venture to say that they would love for people to keep doubting them. They talked about it. Kalani Satake said that we we like to prove guys wrong every now and again. Jake Retzloff said it after the game against UCF. Yeah, we knew we were two and a half point underdogs coming into this one, and we wanted to prove a point to everybody out there. I love this. I love this team, speaking of BYU, because, and I'm talking about this team specifically this year, because they just go out there, they're no nonsense, they're blue collar, and they handle their business. And I can respect all of that because that's the type of football I enjoy. I never played at an extremely high level. I played uh, until I was a senior in high school. My my prospects were to play that far. I was not going to go any further than that with my uh, genetics and uh, makeup as a football player. But I can respect knowing what I know of having played team sports and football. This BYU team, they are a true team in every sense of the word. There's not one guy who is above the team. They don't have somebody who is just head and shoulders better than everybody else on this team. But they do it as a unit. They do it as a team. And that, I'm telling you, that alone 
will carry this BYU program far. I don't know if they're going to drop a game in the final four games of this season. They very well could, because I still think that Utah, Kansas, Arizona State, that three-game trio coming out of the bye is a pretty tough slate of games, uh, considering the opponents, the talent level, et cetera, that they have. But 11-1, and 12-0, I think 8-0 right now. It has been an absolutely marvelous, and I mean a marvelous ride for us watching and analyzing slash just breaking down everything going on with BYU. And let's just hope it continues a little bit longer and we'll have one of those seasons we can forever look back on and say, wow, that was a ton of fun. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we're going to talk about an event coming up next spring for you Cougar fans that might give you an opportunity to celebrate what could be for BYU football, BYU basketball, and a myriad of other BYU sports that could uh, surprise, obviously, and celebrate. And you can do that next spring with a bunch of the uh, key players when it comes to that in BYU athletics. We'll talk about that next as Locked On Cougars rolls on. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Roy. Okay, what does Roy stand for? It's not Roy High School. It's not your buddy Roy you knew back in the day. It stands for Return On You, and it's time to recognize our Roy Player of the Week for BYU. So far this season, we have pooled over $20,000 to support players on Roy. Micro deposits lead to massive change. With the Roy app, you can directly support your athletes that you love, ensuring all the funds go to that specific player you choose. And oh, by the way, hopefully keep them at the school you look forward to because it's an NIL opportunity. Unlike collectives, you know exactly where your support is going and even receive exclusive content like personal videos and updates after the season from the athletes that you are supporting. The best part, it's risk-free. If the athlete transfers, doesn't deliver on that content, you get your money back. This week, I am supporting LJ Martin as our player of the week for Locked On Cougars and BYU. I just pitched in 100 bucks from our friends at Roy and like for you guys to join me, even $10 will make a difference. Let's show LJ Martin the love and keep him connected to BYU. Remember, pay today, celebrate tomorrow. Your support sets your team, speaking of BYU, up for success. Plus, don't miss out on Roy's exciting giveaway. Two tickets to a game in November, just download Roy today, create an account, and enter the referral code locked on, and you're entered to win. Simple as that. Already on Roy, any contribution to any athlete's campaign gets you entered automatically as well. No purchase necessary and void where prohibited. Download Roy today, download Roy today, excuse me, and join the NIL game with no subscriptions and no fees. And be sure to check them out on Instagram, Facebook, and X at Roy underscore return on you for more information. Take advantage today. That's Roy. Support the players and change the game. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first view and or listen of the day. A big thank you to all of you for checking us out on a daily basis. Now, if you have not done so already, check out the Locked On Big 12 show with Drake Toll covering all things Big 12 Conference. It's available wherever you get your podcasts, just like this show, also available on YouTube and is proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. All right. Please welcome in now Troy Dunn. And Troy, I don't know exactly know how to introduce you properly because you've done a myriad of different things in your life based on the bio you, you, you passed along to me. But what you're doing most importantly is you are taking a whole lot of BYU fans on a big old cruise next spring. Oh, man. Well, the myriad of things doesn't even matter. All that matters is the fact that the, it, we're putting off. I mean, some people have called this the world's largest BYU tailgate party, but I don't really think that does it justice, even though the fact is we'll spend eight days together. Uh -huh. Because, I mean, when you go to a tailgate party, and don't get me wrong, a BYU tailgate party is phenomenal. I've been to many of them. But usually you don't have Kalani Sataki come to your tailgate or Jimmer Fredette or, you know, all these other legends that are coming on the cruise. So I think it's it's layers above the world's greatest tailgate party. It might be a once in a lifetime experience because the number of people that have come to us and wanted to be a part of this cruise. I mean, the list is growing every week. We announce new names and they're still coming. They're still reaching out saying, hey, I Played on the 84 championship team. I want to be there. Hey, I, and it's not all just football. I mean, there's basketball and volleyball and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, who else is in there? Soccer. Yeah. The entire cheer squad is coming. The Cougarettes are coming. Uh, Cosmo's coming. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. Guys out of the NFL. I mean, I, if you go down, I mean, Jim McMahon. <laughs> Jim McMahon has come. I mean, I mean, I was just, I was a big, you know, I'm an 80s kid. So I was a really big Chicago Bears fan back in the day. And it blew my mind when they said he wants to come on the cruise. So, yes, we are doing something that has never been done before. We are not taking people on a cruise. We have taken over literally, Jake, an entire cruise ship. So yeah. every inch of the ship is just BYU fans. If you show up at the port in a red shirt, you'll be thrown off. Um, it is just Cougar fans. Okay. So 
yeah. Let me, let me ask you this. How in the world do you charter an entire cruise ship? Well, it's, it's hard. <laughs> okay. I figured. And, uh, I will tell you the first way you do it is you have really good friends like BYU has with Mountain America Credit Union mm -hmm. because Mountain America has been unbelievably generous. We have crewed So I own the company that actually mm -hmm. charters cruises for organizations. Um, and we did this one because I'm a lifelong BYU fanatic. Half my kids have gone to BYU. We've been Cougar fans, you know, since Cosmo was a little kitty. Yeah. Um, but you have to have help. And in this case, Mountain America stepped up. So shout out to Mountain America. Thank you. Fair enough. That's how you do it. But it is really hard because it's, you. I mean, once you take over a cruise ship, they hand you the keys and go, it's up to you now. So yeah. we, you don't call Royal Caribbean. You've got to like, we have to build out our entire reservation center and have trip insurance and make all the plans. And this is not like, sometimes you have friends like, oh, my office is going on a cruise. All that means is that a group of people, whether that's five or 500, are walking onto a ship and they're going to hang out together while the ship does what the ship does. Okay. We want this to be a unique experience from top to bottom, end to end, every hour of the day. So we have wiped all of the entertainers off the ship. We're bringing all of our own BYU Cougar, LDS celebrities for all the music, the, the comedians, everybody's mm -hmm. big names. And so we control every inch. Everything you hear announced over the PA on the ship will be us. Probably okay. be host uh, you. It could be you, Jake. You and Mitch Harper. <laughs> so, I don't think you want that. Let's just, I'll just put that right out front right now. <laughs> okay. Well, now that you've said that, I definitely have to see how that goes. But okay. anyway, we really, we do. We control the whole experience. So mm -hmm. for people who say, hey, I, I like going on cruises, um, but I don't love that there's, drunk people or inappropriate swimsuits or whatever, that's not going to be the case here. We control the whole ship and the entire environment. Okay. Now, obviously uh, it, there's a lot going into this. You mentioned all the people that are going to be showing up. And if you want to check this out, you can just go on the website, BYUcruise.com and just look at the list of, uh, of BYU legends who are going to be on the trip. But the bigger point we made here is you, it's an, it's an eight day cruise. You're going down the West coast of Mexico. Uh, I'll just full acknowledgement. My parents have already booked their trip. Uh, they're going to be on this. My dad's been uh, talking about it for months now. Uh, but, why why Mexico? Why go out the West Coast? What's the decision there? You know, mostly it's because we do hope to do these often with BYU. And we thought the first one, we should make it as easy as possible. So folks yeah. who don't want to fly over can drive over. There's an amazing amount of Cougar fans on the West Coast. Um, that being said, we're shocked at how many people are flying in from the East Coast. So... Just you were, you were giving full disclosure. I have to give my full disclosure. I I live in Utah. I've been here several years, but I moved here from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. I spent 28 years on the East Coast with my family, always a BYU fan. And with the exception of having BYU show up somewhere in the Florida vicinity every couple, three years, that was the only time we got any up-close experience. Otherwise, for us as BYU fans, it's just a thing you see on TV. Yeah. And, you know, we don't get to live here in, in Happy Valley and drive over to the stadium and sit out and meet people and run into Robbie Bosco at Costco. You like how that sounds? That sounds really good, doesn't it? But uh, so so I selfishly really pushed for the BYU cruise because for all of the BYU Cougar fans around the country who never get an opportunity to get up and close, up close and personal, I thought, let's build something where they'll be up close more so than they would even be if they went to the stadium. And this is what's happening, as you as you can see from looking at the list of people. Um, you know, you can go to a game and watch it on TV and, and see Kalani Sataki down the field, but he and his entire family are going to be wandering the ship with you for eight days. And so it goes for all those legends that are coming. So that's why we built this. It's to have this amazing, really interactive experience for people, um, adults and kids. I don't know if you know yeah. this part or not, because we added it recently, but we're now going to add, we've added sports camps. So okay. now the kids can come, and whether it's football or basketball, you know, you can have Jimmer Fredette teaching you three-point shots. The camps are like, I, last time I checked, it was like two-thirds already sold out. But now there's an experience, an up-close and, you know, personal experience for Cougar kids to come on the ship and have a great experience all week as well. Now, I guess the only other question I've got is Cougar fans crave access, as you mentioned. So uh, th these are individuals who are in high demand all the time, but 
how much access are Cougar fans going to have to a uh, Kalani Satake, to a Tom Homo, to a Jim McMahon, et cetera? Yeah. So this is a, you know, it's, we have the whole ship and we're all there together for eight days. So it's, it might be too much access for some of these guys. I guess we'll find out, but you know, everybody's got their own cabins and they've got their own private places to go and retreat to when they're ready to relax. And we've taken care of all of these legends. They've got really beautiful rooms and balconies they can relax on, but everyone who has signed up, we haven't said to them, all right, well, you can come if you'll really, they've said, I cannot wait to interact with these fans. I mean, this is really what a lot of them live for is to give back to this community that has built the BYU Cougar community. And to be honest with you, anybody who knows Coach Kalani Sataki knows the last thing he does is walk away from a conversation. And in fact, he has handlers and will make sure he has handlers that can help move him or he'll never eat a meal. He'll never sit down and watch a show. He'll yeah. be, you know, in a continuous state of talking sports. And then, of course, you bring guys like you, guys like, you know, Mitch Harper and, and, and the people and, and Greg Rubel, the voice of the Cougars. Yeah. You think he doesn't want to sit and break yeah. bread with people and, and talk about the greatest moments in BYU history? Are you kidding me? That's what this is for. Now, I work with Hans Olsen on a daily basis, my radio station, and uh, I can tell you, Hans, he'll be just like that. He'll be more than happy to sit there and talk shop for hours. So, yeah, they're going to actually have to keep people around him to keep keep things moving, as it were, to, to get that done. All right. Uh, so, Troy, uh, I, I will throw this out right now. We'll also mention at the end of the show as well. Uh, if you are interested in this and you'd like to get yourself some onboard credits, uh, you guys have created a special promo code for us. Can you explain how they utilize this? Yes. So there's no such thing as a deal or a discount on the BYU cruise. It's a charter cruise. It's already like over 70% full. It's moving really fast. People who want to go will have to book really soon in order to get something. I'm really confident we'll hit that last sold out cabin here in the next several days to a couple of weeks. But uh, for those who do want a little something extra, uh, because we do love locked on Cougars, um, we did create a code for just your follower fans and followers. It's just locked L O C K E D L O C K E D. So when you go book a, a cabin on the cruise, you go to byucruise.com, byucruise.com, and there you can book a cabin. And then when you get ready to check out, I'll ask you if you have any codes, you'll put that in. And then when you get on the ship, we will have waiting for you 50 bucks of onboard credit that you can use towards drink packages or Wi-Fi or excursions or a spa massage or whatever you want. And that will only come if you use the locked uh, ambassador code. Okay. Well, there we go. All right. So Troy, uh, I obviously have my questions, but I have listeners who also have questions about this and we're going to dig into those next. You're going to answer as many as you can in the time remaining we have here on the podcast. So more in a moment with Troy Dunn, of course, the charter King, as he likes to call himself is great website, by the way. And we'll get to more of that momentarily right here on locked on Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Now, FanDuel is here for you guys to help you have some fun this NFL season. Get ready to tackle all the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets back if you win. Simple as that. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place your live bets on the NFL all in one place. The best part is it goes beyond just the NFL. No matter what sport you're into, FanDuel's got options for you guys. So you have the hunch in the middle of a game. You can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you're placing those bets and hopefully collecting on your winnings just visit fanduel.com to join today you can start with that 150 dollars in bonus bets if your first five dollar bet wins simple as that my friends that's fanduel.com to take advantage of this offer today never waste a hunch make every moment more with fanduel an official sportsbook partner of the nfl Rolling on here on Locked On Cougars. And if you're not a member of the Locked On Cougars Insider Group, I'd encourage you to do so already. It gets you inside scoop on all things that I'm hearing about BYU sports coming to your phone in the form of a text message. The link is in the show notes below, whether you're watching this on YouTube or also listening to wherever you get your podcast. Join us today. It's a 14-day free trial to see if it's the right option for you and just $5 a month afterwards. And once again, it comes to you in the form of a text message. It's not much more direct and more intimate than that. So join us today on the Locked On Cougars Insider Group. And rolling on here with Troy Dunn from the Charter King. He is uh, one of the principal uh, partners building out this BYU cruise uh, this coming year. And Troy, uh, the first question I've got from our Locked On Cougars Insider Group is a great question here from Marlon Shaw. And he says this, are they planning on having one of these cruises in 2026? I already had a cruise booked for May of 2025, so couldn't do this one, but would love to go on one in the future. 
Yeah, I know. And let me just answer that with two quick pieces. Part one is, I hope it becomes a tradition for years to come that people know they can come and show up to a BYU cruise and have a really positive experience for their family and their friends uh, and surround themselves with other Cougar fans. What When the next one is, uh, I couldn't tell you, and I can't even tell you who's going to be on it. And I don't want to downplay what that next one is because I do hope they're all exciting and amazing. Whether or not we get this collection of unbelievable, you know, celebrities again, I don't know. So because it sold so fast and I mean, all of our suites on this ship were gone within hours of, of announcing it. I mean, it's really been unbelievable. So I'm confident that for our dear friend there who, who can't go this year, there will be another one and another one and another one. I just don't have dates yet. Okay. Uh, next question from Jeff. Are they working on Steve Young to attend in addition to all the other people who are attending? <laughs> I know that at this moment, anybody who's in BYU athletics is looking right into their camera and they're like, Troy. So here's, here's what I'll say. Uh -huh. um, I know that there's conversations going on with other legends of Brigham yeah. Young University and as they lock in, they tell me, and then it shows up on the website. We keep adding names every week to that website. When you go to BYUcruise.com, you can literally see, like if you go every every day, you'll see some new names. Yeah. As to specifically who's not on that list yet that still might be, we can all look forward to future news. Okay. That's, I, I, like that. that's a good answer. Good answer. You're not going to get in trouble, but you also, you know, you, you kept, you kept people on, on the hook as it were. So I'm so. looking forward to all the announcements as well. I'm sure you are. Um, now this is a good question. It goes in line with that. It comes from Tanner. Um, how much is it? Uh, and also when did this all uh, go on sale originally? Yeah. So we've been working on building this cruise for over two years mm -hmm. from the time the vision came together to finally getting a ship. Um, going through all the processes of making sure we were doing everything that would, you know, be required by BYU and, and uh, the athletics department and making sure everyone felt the opportunity to be a participant as far as all the other sports. It's not just football. Um, so it's been over two years in the workings. We only announced it just uh, last spring, actually, at the beginning of the summer. And uh, what was the other question? Oh, price. So yeah. cruise ship is like going to a football stadium, right? There's what you might call the cheap seats. And then there's those boxes up in the press box, right? And everything in between. So that's what's great about a cruise is there's a cabin for every budget. So you, when you go to that website, uh, BYUcruise.com, you can just say, hey, I want to take four people. And then it'll show you all your different options and different cabins, whether you want a, a quiet interior or you want a, a window or you want a balcony, they're all there. And I will say one of the things is we've done other charters besides BYU. One of the things that's been really just inspiring about this group that's booking on this is how many multi-generation families are coming in and saying, hey, I need eight cabins. I need 10 cabins. They're bringing grandma and grandpa who have been Cougar season ticket holders since the 60s. They're bringing mm -hmm. mom and dad. They're bringing all the kids. They're, it's really just incredible. I mean, it's really kind of a Cougar family something. It's a reunion. It's really, yeah. it, it is. For some people, it's just a union. A lot of us BYU fans who lived outside of Utah have never met a lot of other BYU fans. We've We've been the ones that always sat in that corner of the stadium that where everybody throws drinks at you. So to, to be on the entire ship with all of our people around us is really, really exciting. It is a once in a lifetime experience. Now, I, I didn't mean to exclude I, Mary, Nate, and David all had a similar question to what Tanner asked in terms of like prices and everything. So I didn't mean to exclude it, but I think that covered all four of their questions because they all essentially asked the same. Yeah, and you can, you can jump on the site. What I tell people is even if you haven't figured out yet how you want to pay for it, you know, you can throw down 250 bucks and, and just secure a cabin. I would, whatever you do, even if you're like, well, I'm not, I'm going to wait till next Sunday and talk to the family over Sunday dinner. I'd get on right now, grab a cab and put down your 250 and then figure out who else going later. Okay. Um, and then Landon's question, can you ask him for a free ticket? No, I cannot do that, Landon. <laughs> oh, you can ask. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we already know the answer to that question. Well, yeah. So we prepaid for this entire ship. And, and one of the big motivators for us is really this is a fundraising opportunity for BYU. Okay. So, you know, if anything, we're looking for sponsors who want to be a part of this experience as well. And we've already got several lined up. But anybody who wants to be more closely associated with what I believe is going to be the greatest BYU Cougar fan experience in the history of BYU. This is the place you want to be with your brand. 
All right, Troy, before I let you go, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, what are your feelings? Eight and zero right now. I know you said you were, you were on the roster for a short time in the eighties, playing for on that, actually the eighty four team, if I recall correctly. Uh, so give me- yeah, so I will share my feelings because it almost gets me emotional. I was not on the roster. I was a recruit in high school to come in nineteen eighty four. Had an injury, and uh, yeah, I, I got to come make the visit. I got to sit in a room with Lavelle Edwards and be you know recruited. That was beautiful. Um, yeah. It was a way different experience than sitting at OU and OSU and TCU. I'll tell you that for sure. Okay. Um, but as far as this season is going, I mean, I am a bit superstitious, so I don't want to say anything to jinx it. I don't want it to sound like we're not grateful, but I'm enthusiastic. There is, and I think most people I know inside the program and close are feeling there is an there is an energy. It's not just oh we're winning. Everybody, everybody, all winners feel an energy. No, no. There is something going on and there's a momentum that even the, the naysayers in the sports media are starting to, to eat the regret sandwiches because there's something happening here that statistics can't even explain. Mm-hmm. And I think we're in for possibly a historical season. And the fact that we're in the big 12 and doing this, takes away all the excuses that people used to say about us when we were ranked as a team. Like, yeah, but there's no buts anymore. We're plowing right down the middle of the field and the bodies behind us are big dogs in the football game. So this is real. And by the time we get on that cruise ship in April, there's going to be a lot to celebrate. I'll say that. Well, it sure feels that way. So we'll, we'll see how it all goes. But uh, Troy, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time. Once again, um, if you do want to take advantage of some, some credits, you can use the promo code, the ambassador code, excuse me, locked when you go to byucruise.com. Uh, I can tell you, Troy, I've checked the website from time to time because as I mentioned, my parents are already booked to go on this. And I've seen that list of like BYU legends grow and grow and grow. And it's cool to hear that there are potentially and expected to be more names added to the list. That's really cool to, to think about. Absolutely. And I can't wait to meet your parents on board. Uh, they'll, I'm sure they'll make themselves at home. I can tell you that much. And they'll be happy to talk about who I am to anybody and everybody who wants to listen. Let's just put it that way. So mom and dad hatch, bring baby pictures of Jake. No, don't, don't tempt mama hatch that, that will, I can almost guarantee that's going to happen, but Troy, I cannot thank you enough for the time. Look forward to this. And obviously, uh, hopefully we can get you on again as it gets a little bit closer and talk more about who else has joined in terms of BYU legends and the other activities that are expected to be part of this. All right. Thanks, Jake. Go Cougs. All right. That is Troy Dunn. I'm Jay Catch. A big thank you once again for your support of the podcast. As always, thank you for making it your first listen and or view of the day. And as always, thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked on Cougars podcast.